Hey YouTube, how you doing? Kevin here coming at you with another video that's um probably gonna be quite interesting. Okay, so we have a situation, and our situation is simple. We have a KE100 rotary valve engine. And what is some of the problems with the rotary engine? Our rotary valve engine is the carburetor is not on the back side of the jug typically. Okay, there it is where it would be on most two strokes with reed valves. Ours is not there. Ours is down underneath. Underneath the side cover. So, there's a lot of videos on uh, YouTube about people running this carburetor right here. Um, this is a high performance flat slide valve carburetor and they only come with the 30, when you order a 36 millimeter carb, um, this is going on a four wheeler, but I'm going to show you anyway. It is, has the 36 diameter inner part and would easily slide on the intake. And then, of course, you'd have to do some other modifications to it. Um, the inner diameter and the um, diameter of the intake is the same diameter, and then you'd have to seal it and use that on there. But you can't put a side cover on it. And with any off-road bike, any dirt bike, anything like that, you need to have an airbox. So if you put this on here, basically what you'd have to have is the carburetor like this. And you'd have to have a giant cone filter on the outside. And water and mud and everything else is going to get on it. And you have a chance of ripping it off. And your air filter up top will be obsolete. So we, for what we're doing, we're not building a street bike. We're building an off-road dirt bike. So we cannot use this carburetor right here. This is a great carburetor. It's got the power valve on it. It's very fast and um, very quick to uh, speed up on the uh, RPMs. It has the pull choke in the back and everything else. Great carburetor. Can't use it on this one. So then we um, we explore other other carburetors and see what they uh, how they mount. Some some have it like this right here and they use a rubber boot and of course that sold them to that one but if it was the same diameter it would be sticking way out like here so originally what I was going to do is use a bigger carburetor underneath the cover here and, and build a one inch spacer for the cover and bring the cover out that was my original plan because I had a carburetor that I thought would work when I went to use the carburetor I found out that it's it has interference with that bolt and it's a small carburetor now I want to also talk to you guys about CFM cubic feet per minute okay um, CFM is airflow like um, everything has CFM your mouth has CFM how much air you intake um, the diameter of it and how much airflow you can push through it now this engine has a very small intake okay which we are very limited on how much air we can put through that. Now, with that said, okay, different carburetors, like this one has a flange. You could build a flange and mount this style carburetor to it and be back far enough. Okay, but the original carburetor has a slide, and this actually fits, this is the original carburetor. It slips over the intake, so the intake slides onto it, okay? And then it fits it further back enough, and then you can do that. So, what are you looking for in a carburetor? Well, you're looking for an air horn that channels the air. This is called the air horn right here. And this right here takes the volume of air on the outside and funnels it through the intake. And then comes out the other side and into the engine. Okay? Now... No matter how much work you do to your bike, you need to have airflow. No matter what you do. Doesn't matter what it is you do for your bike modification wise. Like um while well, you guys have been watching the videos I've been posting on the expansion pipe, expansion chamber there. I've been posting videos on that. Um this thing is bored out. Um it's bored out twenty over, I'm making this a hundred and two cc engine and the piston Perfect. Let me grab a piston real quick for this. I'll do it 
Okay, the piston right here. When the piston travels upward in the cylinder, okay, it is sucking the bottom part of this piston is sucking up. It's sucking air and fuel in this way. So when the piston travels up, it's sucking the air and fuel mixture right through the intake. Okay. Then when the piston comes back down, now instead of sucking, it's now pushing the fuel and air charge just sucked in because the rotary valve closes. Now it's closed off so the air and fuel can't come back out this way. So it's closed. Now it's pushing down. So what is it going to do? It's when the piston comes down, it pushes the air and fuel charge up the transfer ports and on top of the piston. That's how the fuel gets there. Now, at the same time the intake valve is, uh, the um, piston passes the intake ports, not valve, I said valve, I meant ports, passes the intake ports, some of that unburnt fuel goes out the tailpipe. Well, that's really bad news if you have a really small intake. Okay, you see where I'm going with this? Now, you really didn't get that much of a charge into the engine to begin with, and then you just lost some of it out the exhaust. All right? So that's, that's really sad. It's kind of a bad thing. So the idea behind putting a different carburetor on is to get more air and fuel into the engine as quick as possible, close off the valve, pump it on top of the piston, and ignite that charge. All right, so what we're looking at on the fact that the factory carburetors are junk. They're, they're tiny. They're just little guys, okay? And they have restrictions to them. So I want to talk to you guys about restrictions. Okay, what is what is restrictions? This is the seal and sleeve from the intake. I'm gonna put them on as they go. The sleeve goes on first, like that. And then the intake rubber seal goes over it like this. Okay. Just like that. Okay. So the intake seal is matched to the intake port so there's no restriction there okay when you put that on there it is that size okay in fact it's the same size almost the same size as the um, this is 31 millimeters that's 30 okay roughly might be a couple thousand off okay so this is matched now on the back side of the carburetor there is a wall see that wall that's what everything butts up against. And then there's a little restriction there. So I decided on this build, I'm gonna build the factory carburetor. And you're probably saying like, what? He's not gonna use that cool looking fancy thing? Well, it's not gonna fit. It's, gonna, it's not gonna be practical. I'm not gonna be able to use the factory air filter and the bike is gonna look like crap. So I've researched carburetors up and down I've been doing this now for days I ordered a carburetor for it this style right here has not come in yet like everybody else has been using because I wasn't sure the size this one came in after the fact but whatever um, they're just too big and what's gonna happen with this this is gonna cause you a lot of problems it's gonna cause you following throttle uh, following the um, plug it's not gonna give you the RPM you need it's just not a good carburetor for the fit now, this is 102 cc with a small intake, a small exhaust, and small everything's tiny on this bike. I'm going for horsepower and torque. I'm going for RPM. I'm going, I, I want this thing to perform. I don't want to bog and have like be at half throttle, and that's all I can do because it can't handle the throttle. So, what I did was I used this. This is my die grinder right here with a uh, metal chamfer bit, and this right here will remove metal. So what I had done, I'm not done, I just wanted to give you guys a rough idea what I did. Alright, and you can do this at home, this can work on, on, on your KEs right now without doing all this. You can get more power just out of your carburetor by doing this trick, okay? See this wall? You can see where the wall is. Okay, right now, your intake seal is matched. 
okay the seal is the the hole is the same diameter as the inner hole Kawasaki did something right now that right there is your model you slide that into your carburetor and see how you can still see some of the wall around there the inner wall that can be removed and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to remove I'm going to remove the rest of that wall and I've already started opening up it's not done it's just a rough I already started opening up the AF1 a little bit I'm going to match the two and now when I hit full throttle I can get maximum CFM out of this carburetor now this is going to have to be recleaned after it's all said and done um, so I can get make sure there's no metal in there okay you don't want any metal flakes so you know and that's the critical part is to make sure this carburetor is done right so I'm opening up the air the air horn a little bit not by much you're talking a millimeter one or two millimeters at the most you don't want to go nuts and you want to keep the same smoothness after I open it up I'm gonna sand it in there with some uh, 320 grit and make it nice and smooth again because you don't want it rough you want smooth so that's where I'm going with that because when you, when the slides in there this diameter right here I'm not getting we're more like right in this diameter there's a whole bunch of real estate um hold on one second There's a whole bunch of real estate that can use to be removed and still have a good effective carburetor. Now the inner part needs to be a little bit more narrow than the two outer ends. And that is that is called the velocity stack. Here I go. Thank you. What that does is you gotta think of like a garden hose when you stick your thumb over the over the garden hose and it sprays really fast. Okay, the velocity stack is that center part of the air horn and that right there speeds up the air going in air you know the as the volume of air rushes through it hits that velocity stack speeds up and then it pulls the fuel from the the um the center from the rod and from the jets okay C causing a uh, a siphon effect so you you don't want to take way too much off because then you're going to lose your efficiency of the carburetor we just want to open it enough so it can breathe all right and still have a little bit left on the sides and you'll see on the sides i don't think you can see on it see the gap right there so that right there's the velocity stack so it's got plenty of velocity to um you know to give it a little bit of restriction keep that in mind when you're doing any type of car carburetor modifications so what i'm doing is i'm high performance in a factory carburetor I'm going to make that Makuni perform like a Makuni um, as opposed to dogging on a, uh, a KE. So I'm opening up the intake on the um, on the carburetor and what that's going to do for me, it's going to do a couple things. It's going to allow me to run a bigger jet which is awesome because now I'm getting my fuel to match my airflow and remember you can only get so much power out of this motor. This motor it's not infinite. So, I mean, look what you got for an intake. You can't change the intake. You're stuck with it. Okay? You're just you're stuck with it. So, you have to work with what we have, and that's what I'm doing. I'm going to work with what I have. And what I have is I have an engine that can't breathe because it's restricted by the carburetor. It was restricted by the exhaust. And it's restricted by the intake. So, since we can't change the diameter of the intake we're gonna work with it we're gonna make it work we're gonna flex it we're gonna use our we're gonna use our pythons and then uh, after we use our pythons we're gonna uh, get this thing to breathe instead of having an asthma attack you know so I just wanted to share with you guys where I'm at with the carburation I have many many different styles of carburetors here everything from um, what do you call it there? This carburetor right here is off the Can-Am. Uh, I cleaned this one. So this right here was already in my ultrasonic cleaner. This is a brand new carburetor. Right here. 
This is also a brand new carburetor. This right here is for a, um, a PW50 um, Yamaha. And you can see how it's got the intake, the Kawasaki style, but it's too small. So, it's really not going to do us no good. This one right here has a flange on it. Not flange, a, um, a tube. This one right here goes to a Suzuki DS80. Um, or some DS100s. And this one right here would stick out way too far. So, that's not going to work for us. Pretty much, they don't make a carburetor for this bike. Other than the factory one. This style right here is a nice one. This is off of a, um, a Chinese 50cc. And you can see the shape of that velocity stack, which basically matches ours. But it's got a square, it's got the, um, the Honda mount. That would work if you made a Honda mount for it. However, you're not going to get any more power out of this than you would your factory one. And this also has a smaller diameter slide, which takes away from the carburetor. At least with the factory carburetor, we have a decent sized slide that's going to work, that would work just fine. So I'm going to continue modifying this carburetor. Uh, I'm going to sand it up, clean it up, and get it all cleaned out, cleaned up, <coughs> so that we can use a, um, get some better airflow. That's basically what this bike is, is it's an air pump. You're putting, it, you're sucking air in, and you're pumping air out, and that's basically what it is. Sucking air in, and you're pumping air out, out the, out the tailpipe. And um, so the more efficient you can do this, the more horsepower and torque we're going to get. So um, for you car guys, this is like sticking a uh, a Holley 750 dual feed double pumper on a uh, four cylinder uh, motor. It's just not going to work. Hey, would you like another one? Okay. All right, I'll get you one more. So I just wanted to share with you guys what I'm, where my head's at, what I'm doing um, for carburetor modifications. We're going to sand. We're going to open this up a little bit more. I'm going to grind it out a little bit, open it up so that this wall diameter matches the intake seal diameter, so that I'm going to get maximum airflow through the carburetor and into the intake. I've already opened it up quite a bit. I already removed a lot of metal so far. So I'm gonna continue doing that and uh, open it up. And I'm gonna clean it up, clean out the carb, and then uh, we're gonna go from there. So just be careful when you're doing them. There's um, parts and pieces that can get broken. Make sure you get all, every chip that you can out. And uh, I'm gonna throw it back on my ultrasonic cleaner and clean it right back up. And sand it down after you get done grinding it because you want a nice smooth a nice smooth um, air horn. So when the air flows, it flows through the engine with ease, like gentle, and that's going to give you a smooth running engine and maximum horsepower. Basically, it's the equivalent of porting and polishing, if you will. But I'm just doing it to the carburetor because they don't make an aftermarket carburetor that would work good on, well, to my standards on this bike. And because of the direction I'm taking this bike into, I want to make sure that I, um, I get enough out of it. You know what I mean? I want to get maximum fuel, right, maximum air, and I don't want the bike to lean out on me and burn up. And I don't want it to be so rich that I'm replacing a, carbur uh, a spark plug every 10 minutes. So, we got to keep all that stuff in mind. And now that the new exhaust is just about done, I don't want to be sitting there with, uh, uh, what do I do now? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I basically want to get, my goal is to get this engine buttoned up. We're going to mount this engine on my KE100 that's running so I can break the engine in, make sure there's no problems, pressure wash it, paint it up. Um, and uh, I, I can't wait to do this. This is this is sweet. So we're going to set this bike up before we do all the painting and everything else. Because after the engine's done, um, the next step is to move on to the um, we call it there onto the paint, the frame, the suspension, and get that all situated and done. So um, we got quite a few more videos to go. I know a lot of you guys are working on these bikes, saying, "What can I do to get more power out of this thing?" So I'm trying to help you guys out as much as I possibly can. 
and, and sharing every tip and trick and everything I find out um, with these and within reason because I don't want you guys to blow up your bikes either you know I want you guys to be able to get on your bike and actually enjoy it 11 horsepower guys that's not much we want to up it 15 20 horse not on top of the 11 but with the 11 and I think that we can accomplish that I mean there's other things that we could do we could play in the head we could shave it make even more compression but we don't want to go that far um, the wrist pin on these KE 100s are, are thicker and bigger and stronger than its predecessor from the um, Trail Boss 100s. The Trail Boss 100 had a small wrist pin and was prone to having a lot of detonation problems because of that. Um, we're going to be running high octane in this. So we're, we're talking whenever you have high compression, high compression equals high heat. Um, so we have to alter with the ignition, the spark plug, to get the right heat range, the air, flow, air and fuel going in because we don't want this thing to overheat and get too hot too quickly. So keep those things in mind when you're uh, when you're doing that. So and basically that's pretty much what I got. I got um uh, we call it this some modifications. We're gonna do a remote. I'm gonna show you guys how to do a remote choke on these. So you're not reaching down, um, pull your choke. I've got the uh, parts. I've got the parts and pieces to um, give you guys a pull choke. This is basically what a pull choke looks like. And your cable goes down through there, goes through here, and loops into that little hole. And then you'll have a pull choke. So we're going to be putting a pull choke on this motor as opposed to the rod style choke which is um, not going to give us any benefits other than the fact that we're not reaching down to uh, pull the little knob up and fighting with the knob every time we got to take the rubber up. But having the um, cable going through the rubber grommet we're able to just grab the rubber, undo it and slide it right up the cable as opposed to running into the um, thing. It just makes it easier for carburetor changing. It makes it easier for fine tuning, all that type of stuff. So, um, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna, um, we're gonna be changing the jets. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna go one at a time. You know, take our time, see what we can do. Um, sometimes you need a jet that might be right in between. In the case I need that, I'm gonna show you guys how to use a wire gauge. Um, to determine what your, uh, you know, how, how uh, to make that a little bigger. So, but that's pretty much all I have. So if you guys like your bikes and you like the factory look of them and you don't want to go crazy with the modifications like I am, I'm going mental, guys. Barnet clutch, complete kit, board um, 20 over. It's got a high compression cylinder head. I mean, this engine's already already jacked. You know, the clutch ain't going to give me any more horsepower. That's more of a drivability thing. But we have the electronic ignition. We have the custom-made exhaust, which is off of a scooter um, for the expansion chamber. We're going to use a Suzuki 80 um, muffler. And we're going to modify a carburetor that's going to really just make this engine yell. We want this engine to yell. We want this thing to scream. Hey, look at me. That's what we're going for. So, pretty much where I'm at. Thank you guys for watching. I know a lot of this stuff was rep um I went over it a, a couple times. I just wanted to, you know, make sure you guys knew that. that where I'm going, what I'm doing. Out of all these carburetors. In this case, because I, you know, the stock carburetor is a junk carburetor. Stock. We're going to try it. See how we can modify it to get more power out of it and um, go from there so when I'm done you'll see the finished product I'm gonna be working on that later on today and um, it'll be in my next video on this motor when I go do it because we still have um, we still have to finish up the exhaust we still have to do the oiler uh, we have a lot of stuff we have a lot of stuff going on so if I can get this carburetor tuned to the way I want and get the airflow through it I think we're just gonna stay with the factory carburetor but modify the heck out of it. And uh, that's pretty much where I'm at. 
So thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, um, by all means, send them my way. Um, basically, I would have you guys out there with me, but it's really, really boring. I am literally just taking my air tool with that, with that bit, and I'm going back and forth, around and around and around, and keep matching it up with the, out the, um, basically I'm just going like this. Do you have the thing is spinning? Like the dentist shoes? And I'm just going around the inside of it right here, taking off, taking off the, uh, what do you call it there? The metal. And I'm, I'm trying to do it smoothly. And that's really just the art of it. That's really all I'm doing. So, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe. Any questions, comments, by all means, please send them my way. You guys have a great day. Thanks.